people. You've seen them. We've certainly been dealing with this for years in San Francisco. No city has been exempt from this very sad and tragic situation. So this is a really creative and effective opportunity for us to make use of the revenue source coming as a result of the Mental Health Services Act 2004 Prop 63. The idea is to securitize those dollars and to use it to build permanent supportive housing for those who would otherwise be eligible for the services of Prop 63. So those living on the street who are dealing with mental health and behavioral health challenges would have eligibility for this housing. Of course, not a final solution to this big problem, but certainly will be an important step forward. So this will create a program administered by the Department of Housing and Community Development in consultation with an advisory committee. The cost, of course, is the cost of the bonding of the $2 billion, which comes to about $130 million annually. This will be stepped up in years to come, small investment of general fund dollars initially and then ongoing for the next couple of decades. The trailer bill also includes some amendments that we took to it and we had presented to us in the budget committee today. And they are specifically about additional oversight, accountability, and performance review. And I appreciate that colleagues from both sides of the aisle engaged in these amendments to make it an even stronger bill and to make sure that there is accountability, that we know how these dollars are spent, that there are reports and communications to and from and with the counties who will be applying for these dollars through programs that they will present to the state for funding for this purpose of housing. For example, it requires that the Department of Housing and Community Services to regularly post the annual revenue and expenditure reports and each county's three-year expenditure plan. It requires counties to certify the accuracy of the data they submit and it also will withhold Mental Health Services Act funds from counties that fail to comply with the reporting requirements. So the bill is very worthy of your support. I think it touches each of our hearts very directly when we see folks, and they're very visible and very identifiable, who are now in control of themselves or their lives, and sad enough to be dealing with such severe mental illness, but to be doing it on the streets, under a freeway in a cardboard box, sleeping on the cement, without services, without support, it breaks our heart. And we're now at a crisis point. We have to be creative. We have to take some new steps we haven't taken in the past. And I would ask for your I vote on this trailer bill. Thank you, Senator Leno. Debate or discussion, we will start with Senator Morlock, Senator Nielsen, and then Senator Cannell. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, <clears throat> you can't, uh, the last two weeks, you couldn't get away from a Los Angeles Times without getting a front page story about homelessness or the mentally ill in Southern California. Uh, the statistics are staggering. I've been saying for the longest time that the largest mental institute in Orange County is our central jail. And uh, we have a lot to do. So colleagues, Prop 63, which passed many years ago, is a tax and it's here. And it's something that I don't see anyone trying to stop or remove or put a ballot measure on to terminate. And I think it is a viable option to provide an income stream that can be securitized or monetized or hypothecated, whatever term you want to use, so that we can build housing for homeless that are mentally ill. So I, uh, I'm actually uh, very supportive of this idea. I want to uh, mention to the author that uh, when we have counties submitting grants that they should have a, a robust 20-year plan on what they're going to do with those facilities to make sure that they're ongoing. And hopefully, maybe they can still use Prop 63 funding to maintain them. Who knows? But there should be a good, viable plan to make sure those 
uh, properties are functioning properly. I had the privilege of being the founding chairman of Orange County's Commission to End Homelessness after developing our 10-year plan to end homelessness. Uh, this is a, a, an issue that's been near and dear to my heart for a number of years. And in respect to Prop 63, we were able to work with former President Pro Tem Daryl Steinberg, who happens to be on the floor. And I want to thank him again for Senate Bill 585, which allowed Orange County to fund Laura's Law, which is a critical component in helping families with mentally ill members that are having difficulties finding themselves in jail, which is not uncommon. We have a big problem. We have a solution. So, Senator Steinberg, thank you once again for your leadership. Colleagues, I urge and I vote. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Senator Morlock. Senator Nielsen. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, I too urge and I vote. It is a problem that must be reckoned with, and I've come to the conclusion that this is indeed a positive step. My concerns as the year has progressed on this particular issue is that it doesn't really address much of the root cause of the homeless issue. And in fact, the legislature and the administration over years has contributed to putting a lot of individuals into our local communities that have become the problem, into our communities without the necessary resources to help them. And the help alone is not the housing, it is treatment. And we have not bolstered the treatment for these individuals. So they are committing crimes, they are going off of their medications, they are showing up in our ERs. But enough of talking about that for now. I've come to the conclusion that that's change, that change is not going to happen now. And for my vote, I have to deal with the deck I'm dealt. The deck I'm dealt is we have individuals out there who are in need. This is an opportunity to do something about it in a positive and a creative way. And from this, hopefully, some of the tools that we will need, the treatment we would need, can flow that will help address that root cause. Simply providing the housing won't do it. And though all of our communities will not benefit from this legislation, it is well that some will. And it is special to me that our veterans will be availed a particular opportunity and that there will be some accountability built into this. I urge and I vote. Thank you, Senator Nielsen. Senator Canella. Thank you, Madam President. I rise in support of this as well. Uh, in the beginning, I was concerned that some of the smaller counties and the rural counties which I uh, represent were not going to get their fair share of the money. And with the, the recent amendments, um, 8% is set aside for uh, counties with less than 200,000 people, so that certainly addressed my concerns. And all 58 counties are guaranteed a minimum of $500,000. Homelessness is something that uh, not only the bigger cities suffer with, but also the rural communities suffer with as well. And I think this goes a long way to start addressing that problem. I, certainly more has to be done, but I think this is a, a great first step. So I uh, ask for an I vote. Thank you, Senator Canella. Senator McGuire. Thank you, much, Madam President. Uh, quickly, I want to say thank you to the pro tem, uh, former pro tem Steinberg, and uh, all the members for bringing this forward. Uh, homelessness knows no boundaries in our state, uh, and we have 144,000 Californians that call the streets home every night, from Skid Row to the streets of the city of Ukiah. In fact, Mendocino County, one of our smaller counties in the state of California, has the second highest homeless population per capita in the nation. And I'm gonna echo what uh, the uh, great senator just said. Not only will this legislation provide for sprawling cities in California, it will also provide for those communities who are small and don't have the resources to be able to invest in people, programs, and most importantly, housing. And do appreciate uh, bringing this forward, and it's a good day for the state Senate and for California. Thank you, Senator McGuire. Any further debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Senator DeLeon, you may close. 
Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Colleagues, I am very, very pleased to be speaking in support of this trailer bill that contains our No Place Like Home program. As many of you know, my interest on the issue of homelessness uh, stands from a district that I share with Senator Mitchell, which is Skid Row, the largest homeless population in the United States of America. And with many, many conversations during the course of the summer and the fall with my predecessor, the former Senate President Pro Tem, Daryl Steinberg, now the mayor-elect of the great city of Sacramento. It was through numerous conversations that Senator Steinberg and I had during the course of the summer and the fall that has led us here today uh, on this great Monday to move forward a measure that's going to have a huge impact on the homeless population, those with chronically mental illnesses. Also, too, in the city of Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles spent over $100 million on the issue of homelessness, but only to find out that $100 million was actually spent on 911 calls, LAPD, paramedics, LA Fire Department. Very little, if any at all, was ever spent on psychotherapeutic services for those who sorely need it any type of housing programs, those who badly need it. So we know that money was not being spent wisely and intelligently. And oftentimes we found out uh, through a trip that both Daryl Steinberg and I made uh, to Skid Row that the left hand doesn't speak to the right hand and vice versa. So we have a very disjointed approach when it comes to dealing with the most chronically mentally ill homeless individuals in the state of California. That's why we believe this is going to have a huge positive impact on the livelihoods and the local budgets and biz on businesses and on families throughout the great state of California. If California were a country, we would be the sixth largest economy in the world. As many folks know, we just recently passed France. And yet, of the 10 cities in the United States of America with the highest homeless population, four of them, Four out of ten are right here in the great state of California. It is very shameful that with our vibrant and growing economy, we still have such an intractable population of chronically homeless individuals, especially those who have mental needs. As was mentioned a few moments ago by Senator Canella, it's not, the large not just the large epicenters in Los Angeles or in San Francisco, San Diego, but in Santa Barbara County, in the Central Valley. I've seen a large homeless population. They're all over the great state of California, with suburban, rural, or large urban metropolitan cities. This unprecedented policy framework amounts to $2 billion in support, and it builds upon years of research on best practices. It is guided by the core belief that no individual or family in California should ever experience the uncertainty and pain of living without a home shelter. We have had bipartisan support from both houses since we unveiled this proposal back on January 4th in Skid Row, and we're pleased that the governor included it also in his May revise. Colleagues, this vote today is a Democratic vote. It is a Republican vote. It is our vote collectively. And it's something that we can be very proud of, working together in a bipartisan fashion, because as we know, when it comes to homelessness, when it comes to mental illnesses, it is not a partisan issue. It is not an ethnic issue. It's not a geographical issue. It impacts all of us. It impacts some folks more than others, no doubt about that. But we know it impacts all of us just the same. So this is a historic vote, working together again with my predecessor, our former leader, Daryl Steinberg, with all individuals here today, Democrats and Republicans, we can really stand up and be proud of this vote. Madam President and colleagues, I respectfully ask for an I vote on this very, very ambitious proposal, yet very well thought out, that we believe will have a huge impact on the lives of the most vulnerable with mental illnesses in California. Thank you. With that, all debate having ceased, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. I. Anderson. I. Bates. I. Bell. Berryhill. I. Block. I. Canella. I. De Leon. Aye. I. Fuller. Gaines. 
I Galjoni, I Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, Hill, I Weso, I Huff, I Jackson, I I Lada, Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monty, I Morlock, I Morell, I Win, I Nilsson, I Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, Stone, Vidak, Wykowski, I Wolk. Please call the absent members. Bell, Fuller, I Hertzberg, I Lada, Runner, Stone, No, Vidak, I Wolk. Senator Leno moves a call. Colleagues, we are now going to go to file item 203. File item 203. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1622 by the Assembly Committee on Budget, an act relating to the state budget and making an appropriation, therefore, to take effect immediately. Budget Bill. Senator Leno. Thank you, Madam President. Colleagues, this is a Budget Bill Junior, which will determine how funds are spent in the new Budget Act to further the purposes of our No Place Like Home program. So it will ensure that $10 million of Prop 41 funds appropriated from the Housing for Veterans will be provided as loans for counties or nonprofits for traditional housing, excuse me, transitional housing for homeless veterans that also provide supportive services. And then additionally, it ensures that $10 million out of the 45 that we had passed last week out of the Housing for and Community Development Emergency Shelter Fund will be appropriated to the Office of Emergency Services for the expansion of homeless youth emergency service pilot programs. So addressing the needs, the specific needs of our veterans who are living on the streets as well as our homeless youth. I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator Leno. Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion on this item? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Anderson. 